Hey everyone, Ricardo here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up a switch on to fall scheme for transmission line protection using the SEL 411L protective relay. So a switch on to fall scheme is a logic scheme that we can implement to provide fast and sensitive protection when energizing a transmission line. The idea here is that if we're closing into a faulted transmission line, we want to trip back out immediately. Hence the name switch on to fault. Now one key aspect of the switch on to fault scheme, which is commonly abbreviated SOTF, is that since we're energizing the transmission line from the local end, it is assumed that the remote end breaker is open, so we can implement fast and sensitive protection that does not coordinate with the remote end protection since it is assumed that the remote end breaker is open. So a common practice in the switch on default scheme is to implement sensitive and instantaneous over current elements as well as the pickup of phase and ground distance elements used as part of the step distance protection scheme. Now since we're implementing this fast and sensitive protection elements as part of the switch on default scheme, it's important that we disable them if the line is energized successfully. So again, since these elements don't coordinate with the remote end protection, it's important that we disable them if the line is successfully energized so that we can proceed to close the remote end breaker. Now, all of this is done automatically with the built-in switch on to fault logic in the SEL 411L relay, which is what we're gonna be talking about in this video. Now, before we go deeper into how the switch on to fault scheme works in the SEL 411L relay, Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We always post videos here about power engineering and power system production and control. And if you want to learn more about power system production and control, make sure to check out our online courses where we go into these topics in a lot more detail. I'll leave a link to our courses in the description below. All right, so let's say that, for example, we have a transmission line that looks like this. So we have our local end over here with a breaker. This is where we're going to be implementing our switch onto fault scheme using the SEL 411L relay. So we have a two terminal transmission line. Again, there's a local breaker and a remote breaker. So this I'm gonna call the remote end. And this is gonna be my local end. And our relay for this example is at the local end. Now, let's say that this transmission line is de-energized initially. So both breakers are open at both ends of the transmission line. And we're trying to bring the line back into service by closing the local circuit breaker which again is where our relay is. So let me actually go ahead and draw that. So again, our relay is gonna be here. CTs are gonna be on the bus side of the breaker and PTs are gonna be on the line side of the breaker. And those are gonna feed here into our SEL 411L protective relay. Now, what we can do here is, as I mentioned before, is to set sensitive elements that will detect any fault in the transmission line. And that's of course because after all, if we're saying that we're energizing the line from the local end, the remote circuit breaker has to be open. And so in that case, we don't care about coordination. All we care about is that any fault is detected quickly when we close the local breaker. So we would, for example, set a sensitive non-directional phase over current element. So what we are gonna call a 50 P1 element and this will trip instantaneously if it picks up. Now we can set this very sensitive because again, the remote end breaker is open. So there's no load flowing through the transmission line. Now, one thing to keep in mind though, is that there might be some small current drawn to energize the line. Again, remember that all transmission lines have some capacitance to them. So there's gonna be at least some small amount of current to energize the transmission line. And again, this is what we call the line charging current. So we would set our sensitive instantaneous overcurrent element above this value. Now the line charging current is typically much, much lower than the available fault current. So this is usually not a problem for setting our 50P1 element, but it is of course something that you need to consider. Line charging current can be somewhat high, especially for very high voltage transmission lines, it's something in the range of 230, 500, 765 kV transmission lines. And especially the longer they are, the more capacitance they're gonna have, so the line charging current is gonna be even higher. So this is, again, usually not a problem. It might become a problem for very high voltage, let's say above 230, above 345 kV, and especially if they're very long. If you have a somewhat short transmission line, even if it's at very high voltage, like 765 kV, it's typically not a problem. But again, just something to consider. Now the other thing that we could say here is, well, usually for transmission line protection, we would set a step distance protection scheme where we have two zones, Zone one is usually set to underreach the remote end. So our zone one would be set to something like this. Let me use red. So our zone one would be, let's say, something like this where it covers 80% of the transmission line. And then our zone two would be set 
to cover the entire transmission line plus some margin. Typically, this is somewhere in the range of 120% to 125%, maybe even higher if you need to cover for fault resistance, especially arc and resistance. So again, let's say that just as an example, this is set to 120% of the transmission line. Now the zone two usually has a time delay, of course, because it overreaches the remote end. This is usually somewhere in the range of half a second. And it of course needs to have a delay because it's overreaching the remote end. But for the switch and default scheme, what we could do is say, well, the zone two elements, either phase or ground elements, if they pick up, trip without a delay. And again, we can do this because we know that the remote end breaker is open. So there's no need to coordinate with the remote end protection since there's no electrical connection between our local end and the remote end. So again, what we would do here is we could say, well, we're gonna use the pickup of the zone two elements, not the time delayed version of those elements that we would use for typical tripping functions, just the pickup of those elements. And we can use that in our trip switch onto fall equation. Now in the SCL411L relay, these are relay word bits Z2P for the phase element and Z2G for the ground element. Again, these don't have the T at the end, which is what we would typically use for our normal step distance protection scheme with the time delay. These are the pickups of the zone two elements. So we need to use the relay orbits that do not have the T at the end, which indicates that it's the pickup, not the time delayed version of the zone two element. And again, I've said this a couple of times, but I'll say it again, the reason why we can use fast and sensitive protection that does not coordinate with the remote end protection is because we're saying that for the switch on to fault scheme, that's only gonna be active for a short period of time after we close the local breaker and we're assuming that the remote end breaker is open and we're gonna see here in a second how we can make sure that that is the case. All right, so we know that we could use a sensitive non-directional phase over current element, again, the 50 pu one element that I wrote down over here and the pickups of the phase and ground zone two elements. So our trip equation for the switch on to fault scheme in the SCL411 and relay would be the following. So this is gonna be equation TR SOTF and we're gonna set this to 50P1 or Z2P or Z2G. Now again, as I mentioned before, remember that we have to have a way to disable these elements after some time if we see that the line has been successfully energized so that we are ready to close the remote end breaker and maintain coordination. Again, the whole reason why we can use these fast and sensitive protection elements is because the remote end breaker is open. So if we close the breaker at the local end and we see that the line gets energized successfully, then we need to quickly disable these elements so that we can proceed to close the remote end breaker. Now, thankfully the SEL411L really has a built-in switch on default function. So let's take a look at the instruction manual to see how that works inside of the relay. All right, so here I have the instruction manual for the SEL411L relay, and let's go to page 433. And here at the bottom, we have the switch on default logic section. Now, as you can see over here, this says that the switch on default logic permits specified production elements to trip for a settable time after the circuit breaker closes. And we can specify these elements in the cell logic control equation TR SOTF. The switch on default logic works in two stages. One is validating a possible switch on default condition and initiating the switch on default protection duration. Now, one important point that I wanna read is this part over here. There's two ways that we can enable the switch on default function. The first one is upon circuit breaker opening. We can detect a pole open condition with the relay word as 3PO or SPO. When we set 52A end to something other than off, this is the function that we're gonna be using for this example. There is another way to implement this, which is upon closing, which is the second one over here, detection of a pole open condition, 3PO or SPO, when setting close end to something other than off. For our case, we're gonna set that to off so that we focus on this first option over here, which is actually the most commonly used one. But just know that you could use either or or both at the same time. Now, essentially for our case, we're going to arm the switch on default logic following a breaker open condition. Since this would indicate that the line has been de-energized or at least opened from the local end, we would then disarm the switch on default logic if we see good voltage on the line. And for our example, we'll consider good voltage to be 
anything above 80% of the nominal line voltage. So let's actually go to page 435, which has the logic diagram for the switch on default scheme. So let's rotate this. And this is basically all the internal logic for the switch on default scheme in the SCL 411L relay. Now we can see here relay word with SOTFE at the end. That's this one over here. This is essentially the switch on default enable word bit, meaning that when this relay word bit is a logical one, our switch on default scheme is enabled. And you can see here that we have this timer over here and feeding into that timer, we have relay word bit 3PO over here. Let me actually zoom in a little bit more over here. And 3PO means that we are detecting a three pole open condition. In other words, the breaker at the local end of the transmission line is open. Now for this example, we won't use the single pole switch on default logic. So this AND gate over here, it's not coming into play for our scheme. We're gonna set this over here to no. This is essentially if you want to use the single pole open switch on default part of the logic. Now we're gonna program 52 a end the pickup timer to 10 cycles so that we arm the switch on default scheme 10 cycles after the breaker opens. So this timer over here is gonna be 10 cycles. Now notice that after that timer, this AND gate over here also disables the switch on default scheme after the breaker closes. And you can see that from this part of the AND gate over here where the NOT gate is. If you follow that back, that comes over here from the SPO relay orbit, which is single pole open. So basically what we're saying there is that if we do not detect a single pole open condition, meaning the breaker is closed, that's gonna defeat these AND gate over here, essentially make the output of that a logical zero, which in turn is gonna disable the switch on default scheme. Now we can see over here that we also have this timer over here, SOTFD, that we're gonna set to 10 cycles. And essentially what that does is after the breaker closes, we're gonna let our switch on default and it will continue for another 10 cycles. Again, all that you care about here is that you disable this scheme quickly before you close the remote end breaker so that you maintain coordination. And of course, that's not gonna happen within 10 cycles. Now notice also that all of this gets disabled. If you follow these resets over here and over here, all of this gets disabled by this part of the logic over here. So let's actually go take a look at that. This is what I mentioned before that we're also gonna disable the switch on default scheme if the voltage is good. Meaning when you close the local end breaker, if the voltage comes up to near nominal, this is an indication that the transmission line is actually healthy. It was energized successfully and we can proceed to close the remote end breaker to put the line back in service. So to enable this part of the logic, we need to set this over here, EVRST, this part over here to Y, and that stands for voltage reset, enable voltage reset. And we of course need to also set the threshold at which we want to disable the switch on default scheme. That's this setting over here. And that is as a percentage or in per unit of the nominal voltage. So basically you're saying if the measured voltage, which is this over here, is greater than the nominal voltage times some threshold, then go ahead and disable the switch on default logic. For our example, we're going to set this to 0.8 per unit. So if the voltage comes up to above 80% of the nominal voltage, we're going to say that the line is successfully energized. There's no fault. So we can go ahead and disable the switch on default scheme and we can proceed to close the remote end breaker. All right. So this is the logic for enabling and disabling the switch on default logic based on the breaker status and the health of the transmission line upon closing but we also need to configure the trip equation for the switch on default scheme. Again, this logic over here, all that it's doing is enabling and disabling the switch on default scheme. We haven't yet programmed what conditions will cause a trip during the switch on default condition. So to do that, let's take a look at the trip logic and that in this version of the instruction manual is on page 454. And let me rotate this back to normal. And so this is the trip logic for the SCL411L relay. And it's actually spread out in two pages because it's a very complex trip logic diagram. So again, we know when the SOTFE relay orbit is a logical one or zero, 
in other words, when the switch on default function is enabled or not. And we can take a look at the trip equation, which is what we have over here. And this trip logic diagram includes protective trips, communications assisted trips like DCB schemes, POTT schemes, line differential schemes. And it also includes the switch on default part of the tripping function. So this is very complex, but really the only part that we're concerned about for this video is just the switch on default portion, which is over here in the middle of this logic diagram. You can see over here that we have the switch on default enable really orbit. And we also have this equation over here, TRSOTF. And you can see that we have this AND gate, basically we're ANDing both the switch on default trip logic with the enable so that the result is that this really orbit, the output of that AND gate is a logical one only when the elements that we programmed into the switch on default scheme pick up while the switch on default scheme is enabled. So basically this bottom portion over here, SOTFE, enables or disables the scheme. Now we said that in our case, we want this equation TRSOTF to be equal to 50P1 or Z2P or Z2G. And if you follow this logic over here from the output of this AND gate, you can see that it goes to this OR gate, then it comes over here to this OR gate, comes down here, comes over here, and it actually goes to all three phases. I'm just gonna follow the A phase for now. So that's this over here, and then that goes to the following page. That is over here, which ultimately goes all the way to the trip relay orbit and the three PT relay orbits, which are the ones that we would typically program into our trip output contacts. So again, this complex logic includes everything in the 411L, including DCB schemes, POTT schemes, the line differential scheme, the switch on default scheme, the actual protective trips, in other words, what we program into the trip equation. But you can see over here that the switch on default scheme is actually fairly simple it's just if the relay orbits that we program into the equation TRSOTF pick up while relay orbit SOTFE, the enable for the switch on default scheme is picked up, that flows all the way through to the trip and 3PT relay orbits. And we would of course then program those relay orbits into our output contacts that energize the trip coil of the circuit breaker, which causes it to trip. All right, so that's the internal logic within the SCL411L relay. Now let's take a look at how we can program this scheme in the settings file. All right, so what I have over here are default settings for the SCL411L relay. And here we're only gonna talk about the switch on default settings. There are of course many other settings within the settings file for other functions. Here we're just gonna focus on the switch on default scheme. Now the first thing that we need to do of course is to enable the function. And so you can see that over here under group one, set one, relay configuration and here's where you set your global enables for the functions that are going to use in the relay so if you scroll down here to where it says esotf enable switch on default this is by default set to y y of course meaning yes and we're going to leave it at default because we want to use this function if you wanted to disable the switch on default function you could just switch this to no so we're going to leave that to y and now we need to program the switch on default scheme settings. And that's under relay configuration. And we're gonna scroll down to switch on default scheme. And here we have a couple of settings. We have, again, the single pole switch on default. As I mentioned before, we're not gonna use that for this example. We have the switch on default voltage reset function. As I mentioned, we do want to enable that so that we disable the switch on default function when voltage comes above 80%. For our example, you could set this to something different. 80% works just fine. Basically the goal here is just that you see that the voltage came back up to something near nominal, which then you can say, well, that indicates that the line is healthy. We've energized it successfully from our end. Go ahead and reset, essentially disable the switch and default scheme. So I'm gonna leave this to the default setting of 0.8 per unit. This timer again is the timer that tells us how long after the breaker opens do I want to enable my switch and default scheme? 
we're going to set that to 10 cycles. Then, as I said, we're not going to use this Clow End timer. And lastly, we have this switch into fault duration. This basically tells us when we close the breaker, how long are we going to keep the switch onto fault scheme active. And we're going to leave that at default of 10 cycles. Again, remember that all of our elements that we're using for the trip switch on default equation, essentially the trip equation for the switch on default scheme, are instantaneous. So if there is a fault, they're going to trip back out instantaneously. And lastly, of course, now that we've configured the switch on default settings, we need to program the switch on default trip equation. Now, to do that, we can go over here to trip logic. And again, this includes all the different trip functions within the relay. We have the regular trip equation, which is used just for your protection elements. We have the communications assisted trip equation. If you were using a communications assisted trip and scheme here, what I want to configure is this equation over here, switch and default trip equation. And I'm going to leave that at the default, which is what we're saying we're going to use for our example, basically a very sensitive and instantaneous non-directional over current element. That is the 50 P one element and the pickups of the zone two elements for both phase and ground. Again, notice over here that on the trip equation, the regular trip equation, we also have those elements, but they do have the T's at the end. That means that they are the time delayed versions of the zone two elements. These are just the pickups because as I mentioned, we don't need to coordinate with remote end protection because the remote end breaker is open. Now, as I mentioned before, by programming this equation, this is internally fed through to the trip TRIP relay orbit and the 3PT relay orbit as well, which is what we would typically program into the output contacts that energize the trip coil of the breaker, which of course trips the breaker physically. All right, so that's how you set up a switch on default scheme using the SEL 411L protective relay. And if you want to learn more about power system protection and control, check out our online courses on our website where we go into these topics in a lot more detail. We have courses on bus differential protection, transformer differential protection, and protective relay logic, just to name a few. And as always, make sure to like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel for more videos about power engineering and power system protection and control. And we'll see you in the next one.